that's an easy way to get into publishing. Write a children's book. It is not, by the way. Today we're going to have a look at my publishing journey. Not my writing journey on when that started, because that started a long, long time ago. We're talking like, yeah, basically most of my lifetime ago. But we're talking about how I got started in publishing. Now this may end up being a bit of a series, depending on how long these videos get. But my publishing journey started when I moved to Norway. I'd always wanted to write and I was looking into self-publishing, but just wasn't quite brave enough. Anyway, while I was writing Waking Ursa Minor, I got the advice or the suggestion, as well-meaning as it was, why don't you write a children's book? They're short, they're quick, they're easy. Hmm. So anyone who writes children's books will now be screaming at me. They are not easy. They are not quick. They take actually a lot of thought and practice and, yeah, there's not the way I would suggest you get into publishing if you want to publish novels. Just mm -mm. don't do that. But that's what I did. And to make it even more difficult for myself, because I never do things the easy way, apparently, I decided to illustrate it myself. Yeah, that's right. Illustrate it. I hadn't picked up a paintbrush or a pencil in 15 years. I loved art at school. I did it for A-level. I loved it but I hadn't done it since. So I knew that it would take me some time to get back to the level where I felt comfortable creating a children's book. I also didn't have the story at this point. So I was like, okay, I'll just draw while I'm writing my big book. I will draw cute little children's pictures. So I found at the time there was this challenge on Instagram called, was it Instagram? No, it was Facebook, called the uh, hashtag Animal Alphabets. I believe it's still running. And they have a different theme each time they run through the alphabet. So like fairy tale characters, movie characters, all that kind of thing. And there was the 52 week illustration challenge, which unfortunately does not exist anymore, but I had the prompts for that and I did that. I also enrolled myself in the London Art College Illustrating Children's Books course, um, and a lot of what we're going to look at today was a mixture of all these three things. So yeah, we're going to have a look at some of my atrocious and quite embarrassing but improving artwork. I think you'll see a big difference between the art at the beginning and the art at the end. So some pictures are from the course, some are from the other challenges. So it would appear I made a mistake with the tripod I bought and I can't put it down without getting like the legs in the way. So needs must. But yes, my phone is suspended. My brand new phone is suspended from two ski poles balanced on fireboxes. Let's hope this goes well. Starting with this one here, which was F4 Frog Prints. Um, so there you go. There was my little frog prints. Getting back into watercolours after a very long time, because I haven't done it since school. You can see his reflection in the golden ball that he's not actually a frog. I did have another sketchbook that I started all this stuff in with like going through uh, the techniques, shading, things like the, the real basics um, and the earlier versions of the animal alphabets because obviously we're starting at F here. But unfortunately I can't find that so we're starting at F and on these sketchbooks. So there you go, that was while we were waiting for all my course pack to arrive I was doing some paintings like this. And then we start on the sketchbook. Now, the first part of the course was, as I said, was looking at the fundamentals and looking at how uh, watercolours work, because a lot of children's um, illustrated books uh, that are not done digitally are done with watercolour. So we had to do a wet in wet exercise. And there was mine, a nice little Nordic scene with some northern lights. You will realise throughout this, uh, I had just moved to Norway <laughs> and was very inspired 
even though where we live you cannot actually see the northern lights but there you go so there was my wet on wet painting and then we get to this lovely chap who is um eye for inch high samurai i quite like him he's in his little teacup or bowl so this piece is actually a practice for the first assignment which was a wet in wet row 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 your boat um and i wanted to do sort of I, first i was like oh in the clouds but then somehow these little aliens snuck in this was just some messing around trying to figure it out a green santa with a very curly hand it's not just ai that has problems with hands apparently and there was the other side of that spread but i wasn't quite happy with this design so i wanted to go for something a bit more like this now unfortunately i don't have the final piece because after the course was finished i sent that in a frame to my niece for her christening so that is currently on her wall j for jack in the beanstalk little climber dude there and there you see that's my more sketched out version so you've got to imagine this in color and a lot more refined this was a practice of that first idea that I had with the clouds, but here we're getting a little bit more spacey. So it's sort of the transition between that first one in the clouds and this one here. Some little sketches. An ice cream man with his snow cone and chocolate drops. I'm working a bit on my figure drawing here whilst coming up with little ideas, little story ideas at the same time. Scrooge and a reindeer. This must have been around Christmas because a lot of these are quite Christmassy themed. Animal alphabet, K for car. In the second module, it was focused on shape and form of buildings, characters and animals. So we had to do some practices here, showing the movement of the animals. Some more sketches, my unsuspecting model husband. And so here's some of those still life working on the forms of uh, products and the second assignment in the course was about a world that is either found or built under a sink and there's lots of products under the sink but of course as it is a children's book we need to make it whimsical so this was a little practice of mine this could have been the second exercise because i can't seem to find it um, but here we go i have my cinema the projector coming out of the spray bottle and the little queue of people waiting to go in and this was all done with dip pen and ink which does give you these lovely textures but can also make a very big mess so be careful with dip pen and ink if you're not used to it and here we go i'm roughing out some ideas for the actual piece as you can see there's been a spillage of something toxic here so my characters are in rubber gloves but then i thought mm, i'm not too keen on that so i decided rather than making them mice in rubber gloves i decided to actually make them living rubber gloves little red riding hood some more practice for sink city now this is supposed to be an enormous piece and you'll see when i show you the final product i will actually have to show it to you in two pieces because it was so large um, I struggled to find paper that was big enough. Here we go, a little, little story I wrote. Della, the dog and the musical monster. Those are some rough little things. If I did this story, I would obviously uh, make the drawings a bit better. But Another animal alphabet and m is for mad hatter so these are all fairy tale characters and i love this painting i may do it again actually um there's something about it that i really like there's a very sort of skinny suave mad hatter um yeah but as you can see the painting is very flat i think the only bit of sort of 
depth we have is, is on the chair here, which is a shame. This was part of the 52 week challenge and it was week one whimsy. So this must have been January 2018, I want to say. Um, so, and I'd all hail King of the Forest and I'd come up with this little story in my head about the King of the Forest, the um, moose, and everyone's bowing down to him, including their little mushrooms and their little bottoms. And they're all wearing Norwegian style jumpers. Feathered animals for the challenge, and this is Scary Canary. And here we go. Week three was Australiana, and I made a character called Australiana. And that is based on a picture of my very good friend from Australia, who was an exchange student, and she was my roommate, and is absolutely lovely. So there you go. You are immortalised in uh, my sketchbook and now on YouTube. More sketches. More sketches for the Sebastian Sink City piece. Now I'll show you the actual piece, but I do have to cut it in half. So there we have one side of Sebastian Sink City. The idea was um, he was pulling back the curtain under the sink. This was where the frame for the doors would have been, but there is no door, it's all in a sink. Um, so there you go, we've got our cinema here and the projecting, you can't really see the spray, I should have done that a bit thicker, um, onto the back of the dustpan, which is the screen. And we've got some little people trying to cast shadows, our lovers in the boat. And then on the other side, there's a bit more going on. So he's saying no in a hazmat suit, our rubber glove people, no. Peg people, don't come here. There's a dangerous spillage. Um, we've got our recycling house, or our different types of houses. But as you can see again, this is very flat. And editing Helen here. So this is the full picture of the Sebastian Sink City, which is far too big to have up on the table. But there you go, both sides together. Some more animal alphabets? No. 52 week challenge. Peacock. I do like this one. It reminds me of a bookmark, but it also reminds me of a sort of like the bustles Edwardian ladies had on their dresses. So I quite like that. And this one is one of my favourites, and I would like to do this one again. The Queen of Hearts. I don't know what I like about it, but there's something. So I do want to try that one again. Another animal alphabets are for Rapunzel. Shere Khan, it's a tiger. Tigers are my favourite animals, but it's not the best painting I've done. This one is quite cute. This was the 52 week challenge and the prompt was botanical. Um, you can see the lights changing now, I'm getting a bit more shadow. But uh, the theme was botanical and where we used to, where my granny used to live, there was a place called the Botanical Gardens with a lovely greenhouse and a train and my sister could never say botanical gardens, so it turned into the mechanical gardens. So there you go, that is for my sister and her mechanical gardens. Some more sketches. Now this is for sample brief three of some silly animals. So we've got a rhino on the roller skates, so they're doing ballet. And some ideas for the third assignment, which was Fiery Fred, an animal that, or a, not an animal, a dragon, that was a bit clumsy. That was baking, little picture of my nephew there. And here I am working on my silly animals, and I obviously decided to go with an underwater theme. So we have our singing seahorse, our dancing fish, and our DJ crab. Working out my colours, how I wanted to do it. Some more sketches for Fiery Fred. There you go. But I wasn't quite happy with these, so I decided to tweak them a bit. And here is the final result. So there's DJ Crab, 
singing seahorse and dancing fish and I love the way that this turned out the way the red blended into that yellow is just tried to recreate it here it did work but not quite as well um, so yeah I'm really pleased with this I think they're quite cool and I like them some more sketches more sketches got a house on fire got some people disgruntled goose now with my characters they either tend to be tall and skinny or round I don't tend to do an in-between but here is what fiery Fred turned out like there we go fiery Fred in all his glory this was quite challenging because I had to think of the light of the fire and the shadows. I could have made it easy on myself. I didn't have to make it nighttime, but what would be the fun in that? So there we go, fiery Fred looking very apologetic and our disgruntled goose tapping his foot. Right, now we are going on to the assignment four in the course and that follows on from these animals only this time we really had to show the movement so i started by this time actually looking a lot more at the animal as it is in the wild with pictures reference pictures the skeleton i love raccoons they're little bitty hands and they can carry things and here we go getting a bit more cartoony because it is a children's illustration course love this one he just can't quite reach very cartoony here some more forms we had to send in different picture like this of all the different forms but then I also didn't quite follow the brief because it was supposed to be all soft colors but I got really inspired by this picture I was like oh it looks like Gandalf and then I was like well what about people who you know they meet up at the weekend and they dress up and they role play and that became the basis for my next for, for this piece so there we have our raccoon pretending to be gandalf or some wizard fighting against the red cardinal there yeah there's something about that i like it some sketches there's my red cardinal and then a cow because the next exercise uh, the next assignment was about a cow looking for a friend Oh, a bit of wedding table planning. So here we go, the cow who went looking for a friend and they travel the world together. And at first I was like, oh yeah, Venice, that's really romantic. But oh my goodness, there's perspective and cows don't sit like that. So it was quite tricky. And I decided to change up what I was doing, go back to some actual reference pictures, which helped a lot. That is how cows sit. Well, if they were to sit. Not like cross-legged. There you go. We've got the woolly hats on. Because again, I was inspired by Norway and the Northern Lights. But Northern Lights are very difficult to draw or paint. And I actually ended up with two versions of this picture because the first one I did, quite rightly so, did not meet the brief. It was not light. It was very dark. And... I was request it was requested that I do it again so I was a bit miffed about that but I was not put off here we go with a much lighter area picture and you can see the lights are flowing much nicer we have the reflection of the town on the ice and on the water which probably is ice as well um, you can't see on the camera unfortunately the colors it's very sort of turquoise, that, that colour that ice has. So there you go, that was the final piece. Um, oh, this little chap here. You will see him popping up in here and my other sketchbook, uh, along with a friend of his, because I thought my story could be about a little Viking. And I loved him so much that I actually had to paint um, my little Viking. And it's up to you whether you think the ship is arriving or they've left without him um, he's there with his sword and his shield and yes I know Vikings don't actually have horns on their helmets but it's a children's book so there you go I do like that I need to find a frame and I can put it in my son's room module five was all about creepy things and what is creepier than a plague doctor um, so I copied this uh, I didn't trace I just copied it from a reference picture of the uh, engravings from the time 
I remember from school when we studied the Tudors that I loved this style of artwork, this really heavily cross-hatched, uh, textured, black and white artwork. So I'm quite proud of that piece. But here we go. This was the exercise. So we had to divide the paper into three and then obviously leave some space for text as if it was a book. And on one side, we had to have mostly white on black and on the other side, mostly black on white. And so I did a mummy and a vampire. And goodness me, this stippling took forever. It looks good, but it, it took forever. And here we are roughing out some uh, designs for the illustration that would go around a poem, a creepy poem. Still got that ring girl idea in my head. The final piece was this, going back to my dip pen and ink and all the textures that I, they take a long time to do all these things, but they are very good, uh, very fun to do. And I was really pleased because they did actually, the month that I handed this in, um, this was included in the courses, course website's blog for the use of all the different textures. So I was very pleased about that. And then we're on to the final um, assignment of the course. But first, the exercise. I don't have too many sketches of the exercise, but here is the final product. We had to take shapes. So we've got triangle, oval, square, circle, and we had to make them into characters. So there you go. That is my list of characters that we have. I don't know what's wrong with that one. Why I did it grey? It's a bit different. Um, I love his expressions. Just like what? But there you go. And I quite like this lumberjack guy here as well. But then after this exercise, we went on to the final assignment of the course, which was moving house. And this is about an animal or a character that is trying to find the right place to live and can't. And I thought about, well, what about a witch's familiar? Because people are scared of them, they don't want them. So I did a bit of research, what kind of animals were witches familiars? And I came up with a toad. And well, of course, nobody wants a toad living in their house, do they? Apart from a witch who would then adopt them. So here I am working on my seams and my toad. I had a lot of fun with this assignment and I really, really had fun creating my character. And I almost imagined him at different points of the book. Like there he is, really sad that nobody wants to live with him. And then finally, he sat on a lily pad having a fly martini. So I also roughed out the scene did some practices, but I had to work on our witchy woo here. As you can see, that was what she originally looked like. And those were her hands. So I had some work to do, but I fell in love with her. Um, I think I called her Mildred and she's a bit of a clumsy witch. She can't really ride very well. There she is in all her painted glory. Again, she's got this very Scandinavian style um, jumper on but a bit more witch themed her mug is a skull so these were practices for the real thing which is here and that is actually a lot more green than it looks in the pic in the camera but this was the final thing and it had at the bottom um, the last line of the book something like now he no longer has to roam he's found a home or something I can't remember but there we go, there was the final piece for the art course. Now, there was a follow-on from this course, um, but you had to get a merit or a distinction from this first bit to qualify for the second part of the course, which really was about how to come up with a storybook idea, um, draft your storyboards, and... Yeah, so that is the second part of the course, 
but I can show you a bit of what I was working on whilst I found out whether I would pass that course or not. There's a few things in this sketchbook which I haven't shown you. Some more sketches of well, my peg people for Sink City. Just sketching out some things for the pieces. Another animal alphabet, so that was a nutcracker. Scary Canary practice, O for Otter from Toad of Toad Hall, Pinocchio looking very sad. So fine liner trials, testing out my new fine liners, oh that was before I sort of cottoned on to the Plague Doctor idea. There we are, sketching on my Plague Doctor. And then I decided to start drawing every day. Um, this was partly because I'd finished the course, I had nothing else to do while I was waiting, so I just decided to start drawing. And what better way than to draw every day? And I was trying to draw whimsical storybook things, um, creepy things, and then just decided to draw whatever. So that was a 20 minute sketch. Very aggressive looking lady. Oh, there was some practice for my heads. And this was our little little Viking chappy again. Don't know what he's so shocked about, but there you go. That was a possible scene for him while I was coming up with his story in my head. Some more drawing practice. Ah, <laughs> draw with Jazza, anatomy. So... Uh, if you don't know Jazza of YouTube, then uh, he has lots of fantastic courses and resources. And I was watching his videos like, I don't know what, back in 2018, I think this was. Uh, yeah, so 2018, 2019, so lots of anatomy studies there, which I should probably do the course again, because it has been a while since I've been drawing. Hands, faces, as you can see they're not quite in order, ah some more um, animal alphabets, I think by this point it had started again, so A is for Audrey 2, there was my Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors, we did that at school, it was quite fun, and some sketches for B is Baba Duke. And who is absolutely terrifying. There we go. Again, that was with India Ink, which is a really fantastic um, medium, but very difficult if you're not used to it. B is for Baba Duke. And then finally, C is for Creature from the Black Lagoon. And I did really like this, and I loved how the, the India Ink. You can sort of use it like a watercolour, you can dilute it, but then you can paint over it, which gives this lovely sort of translucent effect. <laughs> Trying to draw my child whilst it was moving. She was moving. Quite difficult. But there you go. Trying to move. Trying to draw a living baby. It's not so easy. And here we are doing the 100 heads challenge. These were quite difficult because you had to do them in a certain amount of time. And some days did it quite well, as you can see here. Not so pleased with that one, but quite like that one. It depended on the head you got, it depended on how you were feeling that day, but there is a significant improvement throughout the the hundred heads. I quite like that one and that one. These were all from reference photos. You can find them on Pinterest. It's the hashtag 100 heads challenge. I highly recommend it if you are looking to improve your drawing. Oh, and
and this is a little mushroom man, a cantarell and a little steinsop or sep, don't know what that actually is in English, uh, man. And then I decided, oh we're in 2019 now, uh, I decided to do a self-portrait of myself because I was 30 years old at the time. So there you have it, there is my self-portrait. And that comes quite nicely to the end of these sketchbook tours, apart from the actual designing of the children's book, which you can see next time. So there you have it. That was a little look at my preparation to do the follow-on course for the illustrating children's book course, which resulted in my book a whiff in the woods. In the next video we will go into the follow-on course which went way more into depth of how you actually create a book, not just draw nice pictures, but it came with storyboards and real character development. So if you're interested in actually how I created the book, then join us for the next video.